Greetings, brothers and sisters. God bless each and every one of you today. I hope everybody's doing well. Again, if you are subscribed to this channel, we are watching for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Titus 2.13, looking for that blessed hope in the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus is coming soon, and we're going to be watching on this channel. Again, we are not going to set dates because we do not know when that day is, but we very clearly see that day approaching, and we will be watching on this channel until the trumpet sounds at the appointed time, and Jesus Christ comes for his church. Today's message is titled, This Will Be the Scene in Heaven After the Rapture. I wanted to come on here today and encourage you guys. I want you guys to get pumped up. Because although we are not saved by our works, and we are not kept saved by our works, God has called us unto good works. We have a job to do here. Uh, whether we die first or whether we are raptured before our death, we still have a job to do until that trumpet does sound. In the book of Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 to 10, the Apostle Paul says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained, that we should walk in them. In the book of Titus, chapter 3, verse 5 to 7, the Apostle Paul records the following. Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us, by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. And in the book of Romans, chapter 4, verse 6 to 8, the Apostle Paul records, Even as David also describeth the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works, saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven, and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. So the word of God makes it very clear. Although we are not saved by our works, and we are not kept saved, by our works. It's all about what Jesus Christ did for you on the cross of Calvary. Faith in that finished work, the blood that Jesus shed for you on that cross at Calvary. That's what saves you. So we're not saved by our works and we are not kept saved by our works, but we are called unto good works. But I want to pump you up today. I want to encourage you that we need to be about our father's business more than ever before right now, because I want to talk about the scene in heaven after the rapture at the Bema the judgment seat of Christ. But first, I'm going to talk about two judgments that are coming. So there's the Bema, the judgment seat of Christ, which will occur after the rapture of the church. And then there is the great white throne judgment, which will be at the end of the 1,000-year millennium. Now, first, where can you find the great white throne judgment? When you go to the book of Revelation chapter 20, verse 11 to 15, we read the following. And I saw a great white throne... And him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. So this great white throne judgment will be held at the end of the millennium. Now who's going to be judged at the great white throne judgment? Well, it's going to be the unsaved dead of all time. All the unsaved that have ever lived will be there. Satan, the fallen angels, angels, excuse me, and those who become believers during the millennium. So that will be the great white throne judgment at the end of the millennium. Now let's talk about the judgment seat of Christ, or the Bema, where believers will head following the rapture of the church. Now why am I saying this will occur after the rapture of the church? Well, in the book, first I'm going to start off with the book of Revelation chapter 4, verse 1. This is a picture of the rapture of the church. After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet, talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. So this is the rapture in Revelation chapter 4, 
uh, verse 1. And then look, a, um, and look at what it says a few verses later. When you go down to verse 10 and 11 of Revelation chapter 4, we read, The four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne, and worship him that liveth forever and ever, and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Now a lot of those that, who study end times eschatology will agree that these four and twenty elders falling down before him that sat on the throne and cast their crowns before the throne is in reference to the bima, the judgment seat of Christ, which happens after the rapture. So in Revelation chapter 4, verse 1, we see a door open in heaven and we see a picture right there of the rapture of the church. And then just a few verses later, we see this um, scene in the throne room of the four and twenty elders falling down before him, casting their crowns before the throne. And then we know in Revelation chapter 6, the Lamb, Jesus Christ, opens the first seal. So in Revelation chapter 4, we know the church is caught up to heaven at the rapture. All right. And there's a throne throne room scene, excuse me, leading up to Revelation chapter 6 when the lamb opens the first seal. So this bema, this judgment seat of Christ will occur before the lamb opens the first seal. So we talked about the great white throne judgment which will be held at the end of the millennium. Now let's talk about the bema, the judgment seat of uh, Christ. So the Bible speaks of a special judgment that God will hold for believers only. It is known as the judgment seat of Christ or the judgment seat of God. You know, in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10, the Apostle Paul records, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to what he hath done, whether it be good or bad. And in Romans chapter 14, verse 10, the Apostle Paul records, but why dost thou judge thy brother? Or why dost thou set it not thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Now the bema, the judgment seat of Christ, this is not a judgment to determine who will enter heaven. The sins of believers will not be an issue at the judgment seat of Christ. They have already been forgiven. Therefore, the judgment seat of Christ is not designed to punish believers, but rather to reward them for their faithful service. All of us will give an account of what we have done after trusting Christ as Savior. Therefore, the judgment seat of Christ is a judgment of believers' works after salvation. Now, where do you get this word bima from? Well, uh, the judgment seat is known as the bima. That's the translation. The word is also translated court or tribunal. Folks, I want you to think of this. The bema is a tribunal for awards, rewards, excuse me. In the large Olympic arenas, there was an elevated seat on which the judge of the contest, contest sat. After the contests were over, the successful competitors would assemble before the bema to receive their rewards or crowns. The bema was not a judicial bench where someone was condemned. It was a reward seat. Likewise, the judgment seat of Christ is not a judicial bench. The Christian life is a race, and the divine umpire is Jesus Christ. After the race is over, for each believer, he will gather every member before the bema for the purpose of examining each one and giving the proper reward to each. So after the rapture of the church, when we're caught up to meet the Lord Jesus Christ in the air, and he takes us to heaven, we will all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And again, this has nothing to do with your salvation if you're saved, you're saved. You're going to be in heaven, which is a gift in itself. It's a reward in itself. So the purpose of the judgment seat of Christ is not, again, to punish believers, but to reward them for their faithful service. Now, these rewards, after the rapture, when we stand before the judgment seat of Christ, the rewards believers will receive are called crowns. The New Testament highlights five of these crowns. So let's talk about these five Christian crowns. And I don't know about you, but when that day comes, I want to hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant. So we have the crown of righteousness. So I'm going to go over each one. The crown of righteousness, the crown of life, the crown of glory, the incorruptible crown, and the crown of rejoicing. 
First, let's talk about the crown of glory. Now, this crown will be given to faithful servants. So let's read 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 4. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. Those who have served Jesus Christ as elders and pastors in the church will receive their reward from God. Though they have often given thanklessly for their time and resources here in heaven, they shall receive a crown of glory. Next, let's look at the crown of rejoicing. This is also known as the soul winner's crown. Uh, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 19, we read, For what is our hope, or joy, or crown of rejoicing? Are not even ye in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming? Those who have won others to faith in Jesus Christ as their Savior will experience joy because these new believers are their spiritual children. Because others have been converted under their ministry, they are promised this special reward in heaven. Next, let's go to the crown of righteousness. This crown will be given to those who love his return, the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8, we read the following, Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. This crown will be given to all believers who long for the return of Christ. Throughout the New Testament, Christians are reminded to be watchful for the imminent return of their Lord. We must live active, vital lives, as though we have a hundred years until he returns, while at the same time live in anticipation and holiness as though he will return today. Next, let's go to the incorruptible crown. This crown will be given to those uh, for victorious lives of purity. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 25, we read, Every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible crown. Um, borrowing imagery from athletic contests, Paul tells us that we must exercise discipline, spiritual discipline, if we are to experience victory in Christ. To prepare for such spiritual discipline, Paul encourages us to daily put on the full armor of God. Accordingly, those Christians who are victorious in their daily spiritual struggle will receive an incorruptible crown. And then finally, let's talk about the crown of life. This crown will be given to Christian martyrs. In Revelation chapter 2, verse 10, we read, Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. Christ promises a crown of life for all those saints through the ages that have suffered martyrdom for their faith in him. His followers have experienced persecution in every century. Even today, hundreds of thousands of Christians die throughout the world as martyrs for their faith. There you have it, folks, the five Christian crowns highlighted in the New Testament. Again, after the rapture of the church, all those that are saved, when we're caught up to meet the Lord Jesus Christ in the air, to, and when he takes us to heaven to be with him forever, we will all go to the Bema, to the judgment seat of Christ. And it's going to be a celebration, folks. It's going to be amazing just to be in heaven. It's going to be amazing and incredible just to be there. Imagine you're like going to this huge auditorium, and just for being there, you're getting an applause. But the amazing thing is the purpose of this Bema, of this judgment seat of Christ, again, it is not to punish us as believers. It's to reward us for our faithful service. So I don't know about you folks, but that encourages me because I want to hear a well done, good and faithful servant. Again, just being there in his presence and getting to meet all of you and spend time with you guys in eternity. I mean, it's going to be beyond, beyond our earthly minds. But the whole point of this video was to distinguish the difference between the great white throne judgment, which will be at the end of the millennium, and the bema, the judgment seat of Christ, uh, which after the rapture of the church, we will all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And I highlighted those fi uh, five Christian crowns in the New Testament. And again, this should encourage each of us that while we're still here, although we're not saved by our works and we are not kept saved by our works, we are called unto good works. 
And, you know, I used this analogy before. I played college ice hockey at Penn State University years ago uh, when I was in a lot better shape. Um, and I was the captain of my team. And nothing I ever did or nothing my teammates ever did made them not part of the team. We were all one team. But we wanted to make our coach happy. We wanted to win. Likewise, we should have the same attitude. Jesus is the divine umpire. He is. And we're all one body in Christ. But let us encourage one another, provoke one another to good works while there is still time. Because the trumpet has not sounded yet as I'm doing this video. But it could, it could sound today. We're watching every day on this channel. But we need to live vital, active lives as if it's 100 years from now. And I'm not saying it is. I'm looking at this year and next and I'm like, wow, this could be it. Uh, but also, we need to live in anticipation as if today is the day. But make no mistake about it. We all have a job to do while we're still here. Just being there after the rapture. Being with Christ in heaven. Meeting all of you. And going to the judgment seat of Christ is going to be incredible. But I want to cast those crowns at his feet. I want to say, well done, good and faithful servant. And you should too. I pray this encourages you today. I pray it motivates you. Because we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Keep looking up. Keep watching with me. Jesus is coming soon. Love you all.